What is up, everybody? It's Sam, and we are back with another episode of Pessimistic at Best, the podcast. And I have Jason on the pod. Hey, Jason. Hey, Sam. Super excited to be here. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. Um, Jason did have to put up with a couple technical difficulties. You're a trooper. Oh, my gosh. Happy to support the team. You're in the biz, so yeah. you, you know the deal. I totally get it. We're flying at the seat of our pants. Absolutely. Ready. We're changeable. We're a small operation here, so... Um, um, shit happens, as they say. Yeah, but James is a superstar, and he got us all taken care of. The man behind the scenes, yeah. and we love him for that. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to have you on this podcast. I know it isn't your first. You're a vet. Yeah, yeah. It's my third podcast. <laughs> I'm really like running the podcast game over the last seven years. And that is major. Yeah, but That's this is so the most big. exciting one by okay. far. I won't tell anybody yeah. that you said that. Yeah, don't tell, <laughs> don't tell anyone that we both know. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to have you on this pod. And as we were literally just talking, um, I do agree that you have a perfect radio voice. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. That's so, so, so kind of you. So I'm excited for people to listen. Yeah. I In high school, my choir director said that my voice is reminiscent of warm chocolate. Oh, my God. That is a big compliment. Yeah. She was obsessed with me. <laughs> You're like, okay, stop. Yeah, this like, six-year-old woman was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm loving this. So silky this. smooth. Right. I'm like, girl, you're not my type. <laughs> so fair. Yeah. Um, well, and in big news this week, you got your nose pierced. Yes. Yeah. My first piercing, it was a, it was a big, uh, scary undertaking, but I, I'd totally. wanted to do it for a long time. You have the perfect uh, nose for it. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I've been really, really happy with it. No infection yet. Um, uh, I Which went is to actually yeah. really impressive. Yeah. I, the saline solution, everyone was like, just make sure you do it really consistently. Yeah. Um, and we went to a, a, a really, really nice, reliable piercing studio, uh, that I won't name because they don't pay you. They literally don't. Yeah. yeah. But once no they do, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I'm excited to have a hoop like you in six months. Totally. Yeah. Do you feel like a different man now that you have a nose piercing? I do. I feel a lot more like alt gay. Totally. Like I moved to Chicago. Like I'm living in the city. I, I'm a creative for my job. I needed a piercing. Yeah. And it's only right. Yeah. It was about damn time. Exactly. <laughs> um, I will say my, so my work crush, he had... He has the exact same piercing, and I was so worried that everyone at the office who knew that he was my crush was going to be like, <laughs> you're just copying Jordan. Well, it's always so funny. Someone recently, I think it was Aubrey, like mm -hmm. asked me like what my type is in mm -hmm. terms of women. Yeah. And I was like, unfortunately, it would be like the exact replica of me. Okay. It's like, I don't know if I want yeah. to date them or be them. That's very fair. Yeah. And I will say... I, I'm the same way with men. Yeah. And I think it's because we style ourselves the way that we think is attractive. Of course. So we're obviously going to be attracted to what we style ourselves yes. to be. Yes. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. So it's actually just science. Exactly. <laughs> like when I say what my type is, I say Adam Driver, where in the wrong light, okay. he looks like an alien. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank totally. You. Thank you so much. Love that for you. Thank you. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really funny because yesterday we were at speaking of those piercings mm -hmm. um we were at a friend's birthday party and i didn't get to change clothes mm -hmm. and we wound up the night progressed and they were going to like a fashion pop-up that we weren't originally planning on going oh, to okay and so we went but i wasn't i was like obviously mm -hmm. i would have dressed way cooler if yeah. i knew i was attending this event and we got there and everyone was like extremely all you know like mm -hmm. as cool as you could possibly be yeah and James was like, damn, like, at least I have my nose pierced. Like, <laughs> oh, no. otherwise we were easily the most vanilla looking people in the room. Oh, my gosh. Well, also a fashion pop up. I have never heard of that before. Yeah, it was like kind of you could shop the event, mm -hmm. but I think it was mostly just kind of like a I don't know if I would call it like a he was launching a collection or mm -hmm. really what. It was mm -hmm. honestly just a party in a warehouse, but okay. there were clothes that you could purchase. OK, and there, there wasn't like a run <laughs> like there weren't like people modeling this no. collection. Okay. Yeah. Kind of just vibes. Wow. And clothes on okay. racks. How would you how would you describe this designer's style? Like what famous designer would you compare it to? Honestly, that is such a good question. It was maybe giving a little bit of like a Balenciaga vibe. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It was like it was like streetwear though. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was he had like these really cool cargo pants that mm -hmm. had like um kind of like strings draping off of them. Oh, interesting. That were like the length of the pant. Okay. And then um, a collection of sweatshirts that had like this giant kind of X looking pocket on it. Mm -hmm. That was like, but it started at the shoulders. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that does sound very Balenciaga mixed with like Supreme. Right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, fun. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. It had like definitely like the Kim K Balenciaga vibe. Yeah. You know. Okay. I respect that vibe. It's not my vibe. But right. I respect that journey. A hundred percent same. It yeah. was funny because I was like, James, do you want me to buy you something? And he yeah. was like, I am not cool enough to wear these oh. clothes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll make so. sure to let him know that he absolutely is cool enough. Well, and he was like, I think I would have to take steps to get there. And I was yeah. like, that's just a mindset. Yeah. You can actually wear whatever you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. The outfit is the step that you would take. Right. Because the only thing that makes you not like look cool enough to have the clothes is that you're not wearing the clothes. A hundred percent. Yeah. So true. Yeah. What do you feel like is like your aesthetic thing that you will like don if you want to like be more alt? That's a good question. I feel like for me, I was also one of the only people in the room wearing color. Everyone was in black. Oh, okay. Everybody. Interesting. Um, and I was wearing like my denim jacket where I was like, <laughs> totally. I had a little scarf on. Like mm-hmm. it was not giving fashion girly. It's giving old navy. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, kind of maybe like the gap. <laughs> oh, ele- elevated old navy. Yeah. Rich person's old yes. navy. Um, but I feel like for me, it really depends. I, I do feel like I have my hair working for me in mm-hmm. terms of, mm-hmm. you know, being maybe a little more alt. Yeah. So kind of dressing that up, um, but less color, mm-hmm. I think helps. Yeah. Also mixing patterns. There weren't a ton of patterns in the mm-hmm. room, but mm-hmm. I always feel like that's like, people are like, oh, she's pulling that off. Even <laughs> yeah. if you're not. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like people, if you see someone who's good at mixing patterns, mm-hmm. even if they clash, you're like, mm-hmm. but she's wearing it on purpose. Confidently. You know? yeah. 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 And I feel like mixing patterns and like maximalism is so in right now. So in right now. That if you're not doing it, it's like. Right. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, how are you even here? <laughs> how would you describe your personal style? Oh gosh. I I think I've gotten more into like neutrals and basics. Totally. Um You gotta love a basic. Right. You can't go wrong. Yeah. And I definitely I'm trying to explore um being a little bit more alternative. Totally. But I'm so hence drawn hence the nose piercing. Hence the nose piercing. But I'm so drawn to like elevated lumberjack. Okay. Like, Almost like, Slay. yeah, Denver flannel where it's a flannel shirt, yes. but it's like a nice fitted slim fit flannel. A hundred percent. Um, So I, I, that's like my main go to, but then like with a touch of gay added in there. Totally. Yeah. You got to sprinkle it in. Exactly. Like I have to <laughs> let the girls know 100%. what I'm offering. So true. Yeah. I think it's fun. I've had so much more fun getting dressed mm-hmm. here in Chicago. Yeah. Because people don't really think twice like Mm -hmm. compared to madison Mm -hmm. people in madison do not dress up it's very boring oh interesting i don't know what it is i think it's just like the laid back culture yeah slash like maybe because it's a college town Mm -hmm. but like yeah you can't escape actually i think elevated lumberjack would fit in very well oh yeah um because you can't escape a flannel in madison But I've had more fun getting dressed mm-hmm. here. It's also been interesting. Like my style has changed since having short hair. Mm-hmm. I think I used to dress a little bit more androgynous when I had long mm-hmm. hair because mm-hmm. like that was kind of a fun yeah. kind of reverse thing to do. But now that I have short hair, I dress much more feminine. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. And like I used to mm-hmm. really never wear like skirts, dresses, but now that's usually my favorite thing. They also happen to be incredibly comfortable. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like just... Like the fabric of like a nice flowy long skirt just seems delightful. It really is. Yeah. Especially in the summertime. Oh my God. Yeah. I truly, this was the first year. So I've been in Chicago now for five and a half years. This has been the first winter where the moment it got below like 60 degrees, I was like, I can't yeah. do this anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. And we're still only in February. I know. It is so sad. Thank yeah. God Puxitani Phil said. Oh my God. Short, short winter. Did you know that that's what the groundhog's name was? I mean, Honey Phil, whatever. Yeah. I just heard that for the first time. Like this a year? week, literally. No and way. And I was like, what is this cultural moment that's happening? Before you I realized it was the groundhog. Name? No, I thought it was. You're oh, familiar with the practice of Groundhog. Of groundhog. Day. Yes. Yeah. I, I am. I know all about the ambiguation Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the idea where, like, it, it's a lot of deja vu. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen the movie. Okay. I haven't seen the musical, but I understand the journey. Totally. Um, but I didn't realize that that was this groundhog's name. Puck's so I was like, Tony Phil. why is everyone talking about this person? Is it from like <laughs> Real Housewives? 
And then I was like, no, it's the groundhog. Somebody, I think it was a TikTok. Um, some girl's boyfriend texted her like, Feng Shui. He like did not know the oh, name. No. <laughs> yeah. Feng Shui said early spring oh, it's or a close something. Name. Yeah. yeah. But um, I believe Madison, I think it's actually somewhere in Sun Prairie, mm-hmm. so in the Burbs. Mm-hmm. They have their own, he has his own name. I don't know. Oh, interesting. They have their own groundhog. Groundhogs are like big in Wisconsin or badgers. That's badgers. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Groundhogs might have a presence as well. But <laughs> they just seem really, like <laughs> yeah. they've got to be related on a family tree somewhere. Probably. Yeah. That would actually make total sense. Actually, Cousins. I, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't point out a groundhog. If there was like a lineup of badgers raccoons groundhogs like that yeah type of animal right i don't think i could point out a groundhog i actually don't even really know what those are like are they rodents probably i don't know maybe not i would think so if they're like traveling through tunnels underground so true but i seems like a rodent yeah. type of thing to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't really know my animals like that yeah, yeah. But, but I do trust the practice because mm-hmm. he has recently, in the last several years, mm-hmm. I think this is the first early spring we've gotten in a long time. Yeah. And I will say so far it's proven it for yeah. here in Chicago. Which I mean, maybe it's kind of like that was maybe already happening and he yeah. was like, we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. It's like um, I went to a, I got my tarot read for the first time. Oh my gosh, fun. Yeah. And it was very intimidating and everything was like in par with every other horoscope thing that I saw. And I was like, wow, either something is in the ether or she read what cancers should expect. (laughs) And I was like, I should be like, let's collude with other tarot card readers and align on what we're going to tell cancers. Right. Did you pay for this? I did. I paid $30. Okay. I went with a friend and it was my first time. Was it in the city? Uh, Yeah, it was in the city. It's, um, I I actually, I had a very nice time. It's right across the street. It's in East Lakeview on Broadway across the street from the Mariano's export. Okay. Mega building. Yes. Um, But it was lovely. So what is the process? Because I Mm -hmm. know that tarot card reading Mm -hmm. is different from like a fortune teller. Yeah. So... I, I paid $30 and I got to ask three specific questions. Okay. Um, she pulled out her, her tarot card deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, she pulled out a couple and she said, pick which one is calling your name. Oh my gosh. So I picked the tarot card deck that was a little more intricate of okay. a design. I thought that was fun. Um, and then she cut the deck in half and she said, okay, ask a question. And she was like, give it a time frame of within the next six to 12 months, where do you see dot, dot, dot. So okay. I would ask the question, like, where, where do you see my love life in the next six to 12 months? Um, she would lay down three cards and she'd say, pick which card is calling your name. And then. Wow. Very just, much choose your own destiny. Truly. <laughs> so it's like if you get bad news, it's like it's your fault. Right. Yeah. So true. You only yeah. have yourself to blame. Exactly. Um, are you comfortable sharing any of the things that she yeah. told you? Yeah. So I, the first one was about my love life. Okay. <laughs> and the first, she flipped it and she was like, cool so i don't see much happening for you in the next six to 12 months <laughs> oh, shit. and i looked to my friend and i was like are you fucking kidding me because <laughs> uh, that has been a very high priority for me is uh, totally. locking somebody down yes um, you so want to find love yeah she was like just don't get your hopes up for the next six to 12 months <laughs> okay. i was like cool that's great yeah i can't wait for 2026 yeah, literally <laughs> um and then i asked about my career i was like where do you see my career in the next six to 12 months and she was like um, you're going to have a moment of fame or notoriety. I don't know how big it oh will be, gosh. but you Perhaps will. Perhaps it'll be this pod. <laughs> this is it. This is my moment. Um, but then she was like, you will get taken advantage of at work and it will make you leave. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So now do you have your eyes peeled? You're like, which one of you? Is going to take advantage of yeah. me. Uh, yeah. I went up to my boss and I was like, hey, Rob. Um, <laughs> I, I love that. I heard this from a tarot card reader. So watch your fucking back. <laughs> I don't fucking trust you. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Straight man. Totally. Yeah. Actually, never to be trusted. Right. Truly. Yeah. Um, even he is a creative, so he's like, he's an ally. Okay, so fair. Like, he knows. He's like a James. Yeah. Honestly, they would get along really, really great. Okay. Yeah. He loves Photoshop. Okay. He loves, <laughs> loves InDesign. <laughs> loves Helvetica. Wait, that is a, yeah. I actually love that as a descriptor of a person. Yeah. Loves Photoshop. <laughs> he knows all about Adobe. Yeah, that actually, I can kind of read that person though. Like I see yeah. them in my mind. Yeah. So Straight guy loves Photoshop. Yeah. Also wears flannel. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so then I asked my about my career and then I asked about my mental health journey. I was like, where do you see that? And she was like, I see a lot of instability. <laughs> 
so this tarot card reader destroyed me yeah, totally <laughs> yeah and my friend who was with me uh kelly was just like I tensed up after every question because I know all of those answers triggered you. Yeah. Uh, so that was my first tarot card reading. Oh my God. That's an intense yeah. experience. Yeah. But I am trying to be resilient and say, if that is my journey, that is what my journey is. And Love. if she's wrong, then I'll have good things happen. Yeah. So true. Yeah. We're praying for her downfall. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever gotten your tarot read? No. <gasps> is it something that interests you? It is. I feel like there are certain things like that, that I've like never really... I mean, I guess I've like had my tarot read by friends, mm -hmm. but that feels maybe like we're just pretending. Yeah, you're so right. <laughs> you're so right. Yeah, fuck your friends. Yeah. Um, cause like I do, you can study mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And like I believe you can get licensed in the mm -hmm. ability to give other people readings, mm -hmm. which none of my friends have done. Yeah. So I'm kind of like I'm not gonna. I'm taking this with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. Don't put too much weight into yeah. what your friends tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Also, people who shouldn't be trusted. Right. Yeah. Liars. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All of your friends are liars. Yeah. And I have always said that about them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also have interest in kind of like the Reiki. Like I like oh, that world. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, my mom has a friend who uh, is like a certified Reiki. Mm -hmm. And she, my friend Sophia has gone to her a couple mm -hmm. of times. Um, like when she has been like trying to figure next phases out in mm -hmm. her life and things like that. Um, and my mom, my mom's an artist and she was moving from our upstairs studio mm -hmm. where she had a really small room in our house that she was mostly painting into the basement a couple of years ago. And our basement is massive, but my mom was having a really hard time going down there to paint. Mm -hmm. She was like, I can't figure out why, but I'm, I'm really struggling. Mm -hmm. And her friend came over and like saged the space with her mm -hmm. and then like did a little Reiki on her. And my mom ever since has had, she was like, even if like it mm -hmm. is placebo, yeah, the act of like just doing something to get in a different mindset mm -hmm. really helped me. Mm -hmm. And now she can go down there and paint. So oh like, God, that's it's, amazing. yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah. I honestly, the, the idea of the placebo effect, I think is so much more valuable. Like people chalk it up as like a negative thing. I know. But I think it's the exact opposite. I think so too. Yeah, if, if it doesn't like, if it improves your life, right. then it's working. That's the whole point. Yeah. So yeah, like it's it all did exactly up. what it said it was yeah. going to do, you Literally. know? And so kind of like that world of like energy healing, all mm -hmm. of that is fascinating to me. I'm such a, like, I love to dabble in the woo woo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, I live day to day with Western medicine. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so. yeah. What's like the most woo woo part of your daily life? That's a good question. Um, it, it very much varies because mm -hmm. I feel like there are times when I've tried to do things like meditate, mm -hmm. which I'm really bad at. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to make it quiet up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, you know, like obviously paying attention to astrology and mm -hmm. trying to kind of like get into that world. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have a couple friends who mm -hmm. I've never gotten super into it myself, but have gifted me with crystals. Oh, okay. So sometimes I'll try to do the thing where you put them in the sun yeah. and you're trying to follow the rules, but mm -hmm. I like, yeah, it, it comes and goes in waves. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um, so I'm not the most woo woo person in the world. Yeah. I would say, um, it's like a tie. I, I drink a lot of just like loose leaf tea, which isn't inherently <laughs> woo woo. Totally. Um, but I it just, counts, feel, it counts. yeah, I feel like if any, if like a straight man came up to us and was like, you're drinking loose leaf tea, yeah. you must be witches. <laughs> totally. Like it feels just inherently woo woo. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, I'm reading a book um, that my therapist recommended. It's called uh, Walking the Tiger. Okay. It's a, um, by Peter Irvine, I believe. Um, it's a book about, uh, trauma and how trauma is stored in the body and it's like okay. there's a type of therapy that's very holistic about like physically releasing that trauma totally which feels very woo woo but so far it's been really fascinating yeah that's dope yeah mm -hmm. i'll have to check that out mm -hmm. i love stuff like that mm -hmm. i feel like if there is if you can even if it feels like you're tricking mm -hmm. yourself yeah. into believing something like mm -hmm. That's kind of what life is about. Yeah. Yeah. Just make yourself feel better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to do that on a daily basis. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I would love to get into your good, bad, ugly. Yes. Oh my gosh. So let's start with your good. Okay. I can't wait to hear what okay. you have in store. So my good right now is movie theaters and other Y2K experientials okay. are back and so I'm so true. happy about it. 
So true. And Experiences the, are back. Yes. Like going to a roller rink. Like things that we would do when we were like eight or nine. Totally. Are now retro. Yeah. Which is one, wild that we're that old. I know it is But crazy. two, there's something so um, charming about it. Like go with your friends to a roller rink is delightful. Going with your friends to the movie theater is delightful. That's so true. And I feel like movie theaters are very much back on the up and up. Mm -hmm. I haven't been to a roller rink in forever. <gasps> I went last year. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's like that's $10. Awesome. Right. Yeah. And then you just do the rental. Mm -hmm. That's great. I did yeah. get a pair of skates this year. <gasps> skates or blades? They are skates. Oh my gosh. Because I kind of wanted the retro vibe. Yeah. I will say it is quite literally based on aesthetics alone. Oh, understandably. I think they're much harder to skate in. Yeah. Um, I think I also will need to purchase a helmet, knee pads, and elbow pads. Mm, very important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do your skates look like? Um, they're like kind of like a nude pink kind of color. Ooh, okay. Um, I believe they have orange wheels. Fun. They're like very like retro 70s Fun. yeah i'm excited i haven't broken them out yet um okay. they're currently collecting dust in the garage but you need a helmet and pads before you do that honestly safety first yeah exactly but yeah that's so fun even like going bowling like which yeah. we've done a couple times mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is so which does feel something about bowling feels mm -hmm. inherently retro oh yeah the shoes the mm. smell of the every bowling alley smells the same <laughs> yes. it's the same carpet yeah. none of them have been updated like the newest bowling alley all fine will have carpet that's like um do you remember that show zoom on nickelodeon of course the carpet looks like a zoom set that's so true little bits of neon yeah but like black like night sky is the base of it yeah it's i feel strange. like for a little while that was also like the seats on the bus <gasps> yes you know that yeah. vibe yeah mm -hmm. which i really like that vibe i know same i would love to do in my like dream home when i'm older do a movie theater basement but like oh, classic very late 90s early 2000s movie theater vibe so fun that. yeah did you have any friends who grew up like movie theater basement kids um so nobody that i went to like high school and middle school with but one of my college friends I went to visit her family for spring break one year and I found out she was a movie theater basement kid. Totally. I was like, I have had a rich friend this whole time yeah, and didn't literally. know it. <laughs> like that is my sign of wealth. When you have an extra room oh, that you just put chairs in. A hundred percent. Oh my God. You have a blank a big wall. screen. Literally. And looking back, I'm like, you don't actually need much. Like it's <laughs> literally so chairs in a wall. So true. But like something about it. And she... Glamorous. Had, yeah. She had the popcorn maker too. Like the oh standing my God. popcorn maker. Uh, that in my mind, I was like, Oh my God, thousands of dollars, but you can probably get them for like 200. For sure. Yeah. That was you? like the height of luxury. Yeah. We did. My friend Danielle was the movie theater basement girl. Uh, was that like her most like rich person thing in her home? I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Danny, but I believe her dad also like built these in other people's homes. Like that was oh, literally his wow. gig. That's an amazing job. Yeah. Movie so like, theater builder. She had the industry wow. in, the, in the home. Oh my gosh. So she was like always the one who had the sleepover. Yeah. You know. Oh, duh. that's fun. Way, and her family always had great snacks. They didn't. I don't believe they had the in-house popcorn maker. Mm -hmm. um, but individual bags of chips were always available. And oh. a mini fridge in the basement with soda. Oh my gosh. What's yeah. your What's your soda? So I actually don't drink a ton of soda. Mm -hmm. Um. And growing up, I like mm. my parents never really had soda in the house. But when we would get mm. it, my parents, my parents had bad taste in soda. Oh, OK. So my dad was a big squirt guy. Oh, no. Big squirt guy. Interesting. Yeah. Sort, okay. of, sort of an odd choice. Yeah. Have you had squirt? Um, Yes. But I only in elementary school, I discovered squirt. Somebody brought it to a movie day in class for everyone. And they were like, OK, we have a secret trick with squirt. <laughs> And they brought in a gallon of lemonade. So they just mixed squirt with lemonade. Okay. And we were all obsessed. Like every fifth grader was like going home to their parents. Oh, and like, you we need to go get, get squirt this. and lemonade. Yeah. I'm, I've discovered the best drink ever. <laughs> Little mixologist. Yeah. So that was my squirt experience. Well, squirt to me is easily the most carbonated soda. Yeah. Oh, it's mostly air. I have air. ever had. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly air. <laughs> Literally. Um, so dad was a big squirt guy and my mom was Pepsi. Oh, okay. Which I'm kind of just like, why not Coca-Cola? I'm so fascinated by people who are Pepsi people. It makes no sense. Yeah. My brother's a big Pepsi person. It's it, the wrong choice. It feels too soft. Yeah. Like, Coke feels like um, sharper. I agree. Yeah. Like to me, Pepsi just kind of tastes like I left my Coke out yes. for a while. Yes. Yeah. And it is no longer carbonated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will say my grandma... 
was an RC Cola person. Okay, classic. Which is even wilder. Yeah, that is a crazy choice. Like, who even finds RC anymore? So true. Yeah. And for the most part, I feel like, you know, that's something you do in private. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> I have no problem with RC people. I just don't want that in my yeah. household. <laughs> like, just don't do that in front of me. Right. Keep yeah. it in the home. Yeah. 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 Like, don't try to make me drink your RC. No. Yeah. Disturbing. Yeah. Um, but that's good that, like, you didn't grow up with a ton of soda. Yeah. I feel like that's why you're well adjusted. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I think that's actually the only reason. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if I do go for a soda, mm-hmm. I would say I'm a Coca Cola girl. Usually okay. a diet, diet Coke. As you should. We Especially from McDonald's. A diet coke from McDonald's. Okay. They put something, really something they put something in their sodas. Like it, they've gone on record and been like, we put something in our sprite to make yeah. it different. Right. Yeah. I did just I got McDonald's for the first time in like a year oh a couple God. weeks ago. It was the best experience of my life. I know. McDonald's is underrated. Yeah. I love McDonald's and I'm not ashamed mm-hmm. to say it. Yeah, it's great. What What's your McDonald's order? Well, I do have the one beef I have with McDonald's. Yeah. Is breakfast should be all day. They tried that for a little bit, but it didn't get enough demand. Which so. doesn't make any sense to me. In my opinion, their breakfast is the best. Um, mm-hmm. I like it better than their evening selection. Oh my gosh. I also think that 1030 is an insane time to end breakfast. It is very strange. Such a weird time. Yeah. Especially like on a weekend, people want breakfast until like noon. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, so my breakfast order, mm-hmm. I usually do the uh, egg McMuffin mm-hmm. sausage, egg sausage McMuffin. Okay. Um, and then love the hash browns, so yes. I usually get one of yeah. those. And then their smoothies, which are literally just sugar. Okay, I've never had their smoothies before. Iconic. Okay. Definitely tooth rot. Oh, no. So you should expect that. Okay. Be Noted. prepared. Noted. Um, but so good. Okay. And then I usually will also get like a large iced coffee. Oh, lovely. A McCafe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Classic. N- nice. Very good and very eclectic. Thank you. Nice. And then I feel like in the evenings, mm-hmm. I'll usually transition to like a quarter pounder with cheese. Okay. Um, I'll usually get a four or six piece chicken nugget. The correct choice. Yeah. 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 And then uh, for the dipping sauce, I'm a honey mustard girl personally. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then sometimes a soda, you know, Diet Coke. Gotcha. Yeah. Lovely. Nice. How about you? Um, so since I go so f- infrequently... Um, I'm not much of the the breakfast person there, um, but if I do, I would do the egg McMuffin, but mm-hmm. with Canadian bacon. Okay. Um, a hash brown, and then I love orange juice. I know I love orange juice too. Yeah. I drink orange juice every day. Yeah. Like I, I normally start my day at home with like a cup of green tea and a cup of orange juice. Um, I love that for you. Thank you. It's really delightful. I used to go to sleep like when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I loved orange juice so much. Mm-hmm. I would like be going to sleep <gasps> thinking about how excited I was to wake up and have a glass of orange That was juice. literally me last night. <laughs> I um, I drank um, some Delta 9 Classic. last night um, and it, uh, I was blasted. Crazy. I was blasted. <laughs> I went crazy. Um, I do these crazy things. Uh, but it was like 10 p.m. and I was laying in bed. And like thinking about your orange juice. I was like, I can't go to sleep because I'm so excited for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> like I need this breakfast right now. Meanwhile, I had uh, just had yes. like four Krispy Kreme donuts at 9 p.m. Totally. Yeah. As one does on a Delta 9. <laughs> Which, oh my God, Sam, you have to try Delta 9. <laughs> it has changed my life. Every person that I've had try Delta 9 has been like, I don't know what happened, but I became a different person. Totally. Yeah. I have never tried it. Okay, I'll get you a can. Okay. Yeah. Is it... What is the like typical dose? Are um, you just drinking one can? So I took a can. So each can has 20 milligrams okay. of hemp derived THC. See, that's crazy to me though, because if I took yeah. a 20 milligram gummy, I would mm-hmm. die. Here's the same. I take five milligrams of an edible. Yeah. I'm a 2.5 girly. Oh my God. Skinny. <laughs> yeah, so skinny. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, so I do like a five milligram edible, but this was a 20 milligram can. So it seems okay. like it's just not as strong. Okay. But it, it's like the pace of a white claw where it, it, the come up is really fast. Okay. The come down is like a little bit faster than an edible. I see. Um, and it doesn't like make you tired. It just makes you like a loopy high. Okay. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Silly. It's fun. But yeah. So we each, <laughs> we each took a full can. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're so brave. Honestly, I've, I've been through a lot and <laughs> <laughs> consuming Delta 9 has been my biggest journey. 
Um, and did you smoke? Do you smoke a lot of weed? Um, I don't do. I don't smoke a ton of weed. Okay. Mostly just because I don't have the paraphernalia. I totally. don't like dealing with lighters. Yeah, I um, I get that. Yeah. I'm not really into fire yeah. either. You're not. Yeah, I would interesting. Say. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go tell the team. Um, but no, I'll I'll happily smoke if like friends are smoking and they yeah. hand me something. Um, but it's it's too much of an ordeal. I understand. So that's why I've really like Delta Nine. It's because I can just like sip it like a Propel. Totally. Yeah. Do you drink a lot of Propel? No, but I wish. I've, <laughs> Propel was, I feel like everyone was drinking Gatorade and then rich kids were like, Propel. have you tried Propel? Yes. Zero calories. So true. Yeah. Um, but it is truly like Propel mixed with weed. And it's wild. what better combination? A little, it's an upper and a downer. So it makes it just <laughs> same level. Does it have electrolytes? Um, I hope so. Because <laughs> otherwise I'm not getting anything out of it. So true. Yeah. Or nootropics. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. yeah. Buzzword. Yes. Major buzzword. Okay. Well, what is like a an experiential event? Mm. What should we plan next? Oh my gosh. Um, so, I would maybe love to go to a roller rink. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there's one on the south side that I went to like a year and a half ago that was super duper fun. Okay. Um, we can find some, honestly, probably out here in Logan. I bet there are some. Um, and it's like 8 to $10 for unlimited skating. Um, you can that go play so like cheap. crane games. It's amazing. Like we talk about how expensive it is to like do things in the city, but it's yeah. because we're... We're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to a bowling alley. You can go to a roller rink. You can go see a movie. Um, so true. Yeah. But yeah, let's find a roller rink. Obviously, once you get your knee pads and your yes. and your helmet, we'll go for a practice. Because that's very important. Run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need that. I I bike in the city a lot, and I biked for like three years without any helmets. Jason, I know. And then I fell off my bike and got a concussion. So I was like, no. This is God being like, I'm just gonna give you a little concussion right. to teach you a just lesson. A um, so yeah, we can't have you roller skate until you get your helmet. That's crazy. Yeah. So did you get hit by a car? No. Uh, I was on a divvy. Okay. And Divi, I'm coming for you. (laughs) The gear shifted while I was doing a turn signal. So it shifted on its own, lost control of the bike, fell and hit my head. It was like down Clark. It it was rough. Mostly I was just embarrassed because it was like a busy section and everyone was like, are you okay? Yeah, no, I And I knew I wasn't, but I didn't. I was just like, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing more embarrassing than something, than having an accident out of doors. It is actually so embarrassing. Yeah. I actually did get hit by a car when I first moved here. Oh my God. (laughs) I was famously walking out of the WeWork. Oh, okay. And my WeWork was like in the River North area. Mm -hmm. And I had the, I was just on foot. I was a pedestrian Mm -hmm. and I was crossing the street. I had the right of way. I wasn't Mm -hmm. even jaywalking, but a man was doing a left turn uh-huh. onto my street <gasps> was not paying attention did not see me i don't know if the sun was in his eyes or yeah. what the fuck was going on because he just plowed right into me oh my god <laughs> yeah. did you sustain any injuries no i was like fine he was mo- he was going pretty slow yeah. he knocked my wallet out of my hand so i like ran across and it went into the car like on oncoming traffic so i went to go get it and i like stumbled but i didn't fall oh my god so like ultimately i was fine yeah. but my pride was injured yeah how did you react to it did you like yell at him well so (laughs) i like was obviously pissed off but i was also embarrassed Mm. and he rolled his window and immediately and he was like oh my god are you okay yeah and i tried to think of something sassy yeah (laughs) to say back so i went and grabbed my wallet and i turned Uh around and i was like i'm fine thank you for asking that's like all i could muster up (laughs) wow so brave of you thank you and that's how you and james met Yes. Oh how my did God. you know? Such a fun meet. <laughs> and so then, of course, similarly, I made it mm. across the street, and mm. there was a woman who was like, "Oh my God, are you okay?" Aww. And like, when you're embarrassed and mm-hmm. someone asks you if you're okay, yeah. it really just expedites things. Like, yeah. I'm so close to crying. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, "I'm fine. I'm fine." And then I think it was my first like city girl experience. Yeah. Of I got to the next block, mm-hmm. and I'm like nobody here knows that I just got hit by a car. Isn't it fascinating? <laughs> yeah. Like your journey doesn't matter to these people. No. Yeah. So then I like texted my friend Jake, who I had mm-hmm. left the office with, but, mm-hmm. and I was like, Oh my God, LOL just got mm-hmm. hit by a car. Yeah. Which I probably should have included that. I was okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I called James mm-hmm. and I was like, I just got hit by a car and he was working. So I could tell he was a little bit distracted, but mm-hmm. he was like, Oh my God, like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. And he like immediately changed the subject. So Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, we're playing it cool. Yeah. We're trying to distract me. Mm -hmm. And then I like 
you know, chatted with him until I got on the train. And then I hung up and my coworker Jake texted me mm-hmm. and was like, oh my God, like, are you okay? He called me yeah. and he was like, is everything okay? And I was like, yes, yes, mm-hmm. I am fine. Um, I was like, I have to go. I'm jumping on the train, mm-hmm. hung up on him. Kind of like couldn't stop thinking about it, obviously, when I was on the train ride home and I was alone. And then I got off the train and I was like, hey, I need to tell another man in my life. So I called mm-hmm. my dad uh-huh. and I was like, oh my God, I just got hit by a car. Oh my and my God. dad was like, are you okay? And at this point I'm sobbing. Like, oh. <laughs> I was oh crying God. so much. So I took a different route home so that yeah. like it was a less busy street and yeah. not as many people would see me in tears. Mm-hmm. And then I finally made it home. So I hung up on my dad, got upstairs and James, who was still working in his office was like, I'm so glad that you didn't get hit by a car is what he called out. And I was like, what? I did get hit by a car. Oh my God. So he must have heard almost or something. Oh. So then he comes out of the office because I'm obviously in full on tears and he's like, oh my God, I thought that you almost got hit by a car. And I'm like crying so hard. And he was like, All right, is everything okay? He's like following me around the house. Oh my God. And then I went into the bathroom and I was like, I just want to be alone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. So, oh my you God. know, but otherwise we're all good. Wow. The, the doors you've opened so true well i'm sorry you went through that that's thank awful you. that guy's so rude so rude i'll go find him and avenge you yeah, thank you yeah i actually love that yeah and uh, kudos to you for like not immediately leaving the city once that happened yeah it was very like it was like literally my second week of working out of the we work oh or my something. god it was so crazy uh, and you're like this is what happens in the big city i was like yeah here it's we go dangerous. yeah you gotta strap up yeah that's why i need my knee pads my elbow pads yeah etc yeah. i'll Just start to go to, find me for you yeah thank you yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of the experience that I had that mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we have to be watchful yeah. at all times. Yeah. People, nobody's looking out for you. Yes. Very in fair. In these city streets. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you have a place where you are planning on buying that equipment? That's such a good question. I don't know. I don't okay. even know where you find those things anymore. Okay. I haven't well, had to buy a helmet in years. Isn't Yeah. Here's the deal. I have an inn okay. at a really cool place. <laughs> okay. You know a guy. Uh, have you heard of REI? Um, I think I'm familiar. Okay. Well, here's the deal, girl. I'm a member at REI. I didn't know you could be a member. Yeah, I didn't either, but I got tricked into it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is, it's how I got my helmet. Okay, love. A friend was like. Members only. Helmets yeah. are only for members. Well, literally, they trick you into thinking that like you can really only shop here if you have a membership. Oh, shit. Yeah, but it's like a one-time $30 membership deal. Okay. And then they give you a $30 gift card in exchange so in your head you're like oh it's free yeah um and the benefits for membership (laughs) truly um the the um benefits are like you get early access to items and you get like access to clearance items okay but that's it okay so i'm just a i'm a member for life but i don't need any of these benefits okay Um, but so you don't pay like a monthly membership right it's just a one-time thirty dollar situation but I am a member at REI, so you can use my membership benefits. Thank you, I just don't know what they are. <laughs> Early access to clearance items. Yeah. So maybe if they're putting those knee pads on clearance. Right. Which nobody's wearing knee pads, clearly. Yeah, so, so true. they have to have them on clearance. And people should start. Yes. People need to start wearing knee pads. Yes. It's wild how few people, like even on Lakeshore or like the Lakeshore path. Yeah. How many people are biking and roller skating and all of that with no pads? Not safe. Right by the water, too, which is genuinely so dangerous. Right. Like, you could literally drown. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who almost drowned in Lake Michigan. No way. Yeah. I had to get saved. Oh, my God. You got yeah. saved? Yeah. By, like, a lifeguard or a passerby? Uh, a friend who happened to be a lifeguard. Oh, okay. It's always yeah. good to have those. Yeah. It was awful. So, always I will never go into the lake again. Okay. So yeah, fair. Unless I have knee pads. <laughs> yeah. Because that's really the only way to stay right, safe. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I would love... Mm-hmm to get into your bad yes okay bad i am now in the mood where i viscerally hate apartments that have like been scraped of all of their personality thank you like the 2014 new condo build where everything yes. is gray white trim blank cabinets uh-huh. there's no detail there's no nothing i know i'm like this is fun and clean now but it isn't gonna have any value and like five years it has no charm yeah there's no personality Mm -hmm. i also don't even feel like it fits in i mean it's like taking the minimalist aesthetic too far Mm -hmm. like i think you can do minimalist in a charming Mm -hmm. way that's Mm -hmm. not it yeah it almost feels like it's going to turn into like 
80s 90s brutalism so true which literally feels like a prison yeah right concrete box yeah just no joy i know and also i feel like it people the it has like a cheap vibe to it too like it yeah. feels like it's being mm-hmm. done in an inexpensive way yeah but it's noticeably like oh mm-hmm. this is actually gross mm-hmm. and there are like 30 other identical buildings right next to it yeah yeah i think the most heinous thing though because mm-hmm. like it sucks when that's what you're building from the ground up mm-hmm. but i think it's even worse if you're gutting a beautiful building yes and then that's how you're refurbishing like that to me is just such a disgrace yeah like you're sick if you do that that is a sick messed up thing to do yeah the only thing that i would ever allow is uh if there's like exposed brick in a place i do support painting that white okay totally i'm okay with that that, but like don't strip away anything i know because it'll come back right like i think chicago is a perfect example of all the architecture from like the victorian era that's so intricate and ornate yeah if they had gutted that like 30 years afterwards when it like wasn't cool anymore we would lose all that but now it's just timeless so true well when i was first trying to move here Mm -hmm. like i really wanted a classic chicago Mm walk-up i was like that's actually the whole reason you moved to the city (laughs) and then i wanted something that had like the vintage charm Mm -hmm. um and I stumbled on so many of the buildings that had mm. like gutted it. Yeah. And then they were also still like charging an insane amount, which yeah. like, don't get me wrong. I love a fresh new appliance. Yeah. But other than that, like don't ruin mm. the house. Yeah. What's and your I, most important appliance? For me, I think it's laundry and unit. I mm. just, I need that. Mm. That is something that it is so luxurious. Yeah. And I love being able to leave mm-hmm. my clothes in the dryer for days yeah. and have nobody say shit about it to me. Okay, chaos queen, we love. <laughs> What's your most important appliance? Dishwasher. I could never live somewhere that doesn't have a dishwasher. Yeah. I'm like notorious for how many dishes I use. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, I use six pieces of silverware every morning. Oh my God, you know the exact number. Yeah. I need the breakdown. Yeah. So I pretty much have the same meal every morning. Okay. It's a, You're one of those. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a two egg omelet with feta cheese, half an avocado. Okay. Um, then a piece of whole grain toast with peanut butter. And then, as okay. I mentioned earlier, a cup of hot green tea, a cup of orange glass juice, of orange and then juice. a glass of water. Okay. So the oh, hydration, wow. energy, and fun. Okay. Orange totally, juice is fun. Totally. Green, is, green tea is hydration. No, green tea is energy. Water is hydration. Okay. Um, so... I will use a like cutting knife to cut open the avocado. I'll use a big spoon to scoop out the half of the avocado. Totally. I'll use a fork to scramble the eggs. Yes. I'll use um, a butter knife to spread the peanut butter. I'll use um, a spoon with the omelet itself of like um, move the pan around and like scoop some of the egg yolk and to make sure it all gets cooked. Um, and then, that's five yeah and then another fork to eat my breakfast okay wow yeah and that's just utensils that's literally just <laughs> utensils i use a large plate for the omelet a small plate for the toast and then a small bowl for the eggs wow yeah eggs in the bowl yeah okay to scramble oh da da yeah okay yeah totally yeah so that you need a dishwasher. I absolutely need a dishwasher. You need staff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, all, all of the people that I've lived with in the past, like, four years have been like, this is insane. You have to run the dishwasher every single day. And I'm like, girl, that's why we have a dishwasher. Totally. That's, like, the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my... I think the reason I could live without a dishwasher mm-hmm. is I don't ever trust them to do their job for some reason. Oh, okay. So I do essentially... I still use it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I pretty much clean the dish before Mm -hmm. I put it in there. Oh, wow. Okay. Which James is always like, I feel like you're doing more work than is necessary. But I'm like, I can't put it with like caked on food in there. Mm -hmm. Like, where the fuck does the food go? It it goes away. (laughs) (laughs) I'm on team James here. (laughs) Like you throw it in there and then if it doesn't get clean, you just leave it in there for another round. (laughs) Totally. You just leave it in until it's clean. And that works for you. It does, except for avocado getting stuck on spoons. Avoc- dried avocado does not come off on spoons. Yeah, that's one of those ones you actually have to work it pretty hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is really offensive. Thankfully. Especially since that's an everyday occurrence for you. It is so often. <laughs> um, but thankfully, my roommate is also a very good person. And he'll like realize that the same spoon has been in the dishwasher like three rounds. So then he'll just like hand wash it for me. Okay, that's yeah. nice. So you I, do have some staff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I it's a very conscious choice of mine to. Uh, we've talked about the the baby mama. 
yes, mom, dynamic. baby mommy dynamic. Yes. I surround myself in my home with mommies. Okay, love. As a big old baby. I will say that was never my intention mm -hmm. and not what I first sought out James mm -hmm. to be, but mm -hmm. he has turned it into mommy in many ways. That's the dream. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that he's cooking the majority mm -hmm. of our meals, I'm kind of like, I have it made here. Yeah. And I can't pretend that yeah. I don't. What's your favorite thing he cooks? That's a really good question. He's been experimenting a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but one of my favorite things that we have brought back with us from the DR that like I formerly was just like a mm -hmm. meal that I looked forward to when we were on mm -hmm. vacation is his Dominican breakfast, which he was kind of talking mm -hmm. about this morning. Mm -hmm. It's like this really good Dominican sausage that's like so salty. Mm -hmm. um, this fried cheese, queso de frayer, and it's like these, it's a thick wedge of cheese. Mm -hmm. Nothing about this meal is healthy, so I should preface with like, you shouldn't probably eat this every day. Hey, it's super fun though. <laughs> and then like over easy eggs, mm -hmm. um, and usually we'll put the arish, like that yogurt cheese mm -hmm. on top. And then my preference is to have this with something called mango, which I believe is, um, there's one that's like fried plantains and one that is, I forget exactly what the mango is, but it's like this like kind of mushy mm -hmm. potato like, I don't even know how to describe it. Okay. And you put like a pickled onion on top. Oh, fun. And it's literally delicious. Okay. I feel like pickling, pickled items are like jumping up the ladder oh my gosh, in yes. terms of how good they are culinarily well and i mean you work in the food industry i am a foodie yeah so i feel yeah. like you probably know what's trending yeah yeah um that was actually something we were talking about we had a meeting with our pr agency um last week and we were just talking about like food trends and snack trends and like yeah. what's happening next and what yep. we need to be looking out for um so it's very fun. We've got some good stuff coming down the pipeline. And I can't wait. Yeah. Because I feel like even in general, like pickles mm -hmm. had such a moment this year. Yeah. Yeah. We, our company, not that I'm advertising my company, but we launched. <laughs> They're not some, a sponsor, so we're not right. mentioning. I will not tell you what Fox-based company I work for <laughs> that is started in Chicago. Um, Fox follow. Based. Yeah. I won't tell you to follow Foxtrot Market <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, but we launched some spicy dill pickle popcorn. Okay. And it's so good. That actually sounds delicious. Yeah. Like spicy dill anything. Spicy yeah. dill pickle anything is just like perfect. Well, and like we were saying, dill underutilized. Yeah. Underutilized in Western Western cuisine. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many spices that like people just need to open their eyes to from different cultures. Yeah. There's so much out there. There really is. Yeah. And like, honestly, American food can be bland. It's so bland. Yeah. Like the fact that people are just growing up, like eating steak and potatoes with no seasoning. I know. Is wild. Literally. Yeah. I know. I have a couple of people in my life who definitely are like the, similar to how you have the same breakfast mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. They have the same like dinner every day mm -hmm. and it's like chicken and green beans. I'm like that to that's, me is so sad. Yeah. That's, that's very really boring. Sad. Unless you're like on a, like if there's a, like a health kick reason behind it or you're like yeah. training for a bodybuilding competition. That is the then, only excuse. Yeah. If you're not <laughs> training for Iron Man, I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, especially for people who we ha we're very lucky. We live in a city that has so much to offer in the culinary space and in the food and so beverage true. space that like take advantage of it. I know. I do love that about Chicago. Logan mm -hmm. in particular, I've had so mm -hmm. many amazing meals in this yeah. neighborhood. What's like your favorite, don't say the restaurant name because they're not a sponsor, <laughs> yeah. um, but what's your favorite meal that you've had at a local restaurant here? So I feel like there are a few. Okay. Um, there is a new American, which I know we were just seeing on American cuisine, yeah. but a new American mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. that is actually just down the street. Okay. Um, notoriously hard it. to get into. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, and we actually stumbled in there when we first moved here mm -hmm. on like a random Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm right at like five. So we, mm -hmm. we were able to get sat. Oh we didn't even have a reservation. I didn't know how popular it was. That's amazing. And um, they had a pasta that like changed my life. What what was so special about it? It had like a white sauce. I believe there was like a mushroom base. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know what all was in there. Mm -hmm. Incredible, creamy, rich, delicious. Okay. Small plate, but like mm -hmm. you're full. Was it, it wasn't like a cinnamon pasta, correct? It wasn't cinnamon, but it did have a sweet element. Okay. Which some people are um, not into that. Okay. I personally love that. Like a brown sugar. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. I think I might know the restaurant you're talking about, okay. but we won't name it because they don't pay you. 
Yeah, so true. Once they do, then we will have a whole episode on then it. Then things will be major for yeah. them. Okay, but no, that sounds absolutely delicious. So good. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also a breakfast place mm-hmm. um, that's like closer up by the actual Logan Square. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have not had a single miss from there. Oh, Everything yeah. is so good. What's been your favorite? I had this like... I'm gonna, I don't remember even the name. I would have mm-hmm. to look up on a menu. Mm-hmm. I believe it has Polish ties. Oh, okay. Um, and it was kind of like, I think it was a little bit noodle based, mm-hmm. but there was like all sorts of like meat and potatoes and it was kind mm-hmm. of like a scramble. Mm-hmm. I think there was an egg element. I don't mm-hmm. know what was going on on that plate, but incredible, amazing. Oh my gosh, amazing. And that was like, rec- I would have never ordered it because um, I had no fucking clue what it was. Mm-hmm. But the waitress was like, yeah, I think you should try mm-hmm. this. And they have really mm-hmm. good specials. Mm-hmm. Um, also very hard to get into. So you mm-hmm. have to be down to wait like two hours for brunch. But oh, wow. Okay. Noted. If you go into it with the mindset that you're going to be waiting a while. Okay. Noted. Yeah. yeah. I haven't really explored Logan Square culinary offerings very much because I, I live in East Lakeview. So yeah, I have some. Recs. I'm not here very, very often, but I'll happily take yeah all of your recommendations. We have like whenever friends come to visit, there's mm-hmm. like a pretty standard like mm-hmm. here's where we're going for dinner. Here's where we're going for breakfast. Oh, like I have a little routine. That's so fun. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it feel nice? Like because you guys have been here for a year and a half now yeah. where now you have people visiting and you're like, I can't wait to show you this place that I've discovered. It feels like we're finally established, yeah. which is so nice. Yeah. And that's so fun. Like being able to mm-hmm. take people around to your spot. Yeah. There's yeah. no greater feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're, we're people in our mid twenties living in one of the biggest cities in the country. Like we have such cool things Truly. like that, that we, I think take for granted sometimes I know, just because it's so easily accessible. Yeah. Yeah. And you forget that like not everyone has what we have. Yeah. Like my mom is like, going to Applebee's. Yeah, totally. <laughs> they are not and a we sponsor. We won't fault her for that. Right. Yeah. It's just like different offerings. Yes. Yeah. And I, I do love had Applebee's. A, I had a terrible experience last time I went to an Applebee's. Wait, tell me more because I worked at Applebee's in college. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. We went to an Applebee's. My dad and I were running mm-hmm. a half marathon the next morning. Okay. Brave. And thank you. And so we were looking to, you know, obviously carbo load mm-hmm. as one does. <laughs> oh no. And I want to say we were in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe like the, oh my God, what is that giant mall area where it's kind of just chain restaurants mm-hmm. and shops, Okay, <laughs> like Baby or something, Bayshore. Um, and we were staying in that area mm-hmm. at a hotel. We wanted to find a place that would have like pasta offerings. Mm-hmm. And the only thing we could come up with was an Applebee's. Mm-hmm. Everyone was grumpy. Like my mm-hmm. mom was pissed off. No one was in a good mood. Mm-hmm. Not a good headspace for mm-hmm. going into the Applebee's. Yeah. And we got there and like no one was really in there, but Mm -hmm. they still were like, we're short staffed. We can't see you right away. Mm -hmm. So fine. We ended up like going and grabbing a glass of wine at the bar. My mom's wine glass came and it had like clearly like a lipstick imprint (gasps) on it. Oh no. And my mom's like, so can I not drink out of this please for obvious reasons? Yeah. And then after, I'm not kidding. It was probably like an hour and 45 minutes. We like got sad. (gasps) It was so long oh, and this no. restaurant was not full by any means yeah. and we got sat and they put us in this booth uh-huh. that was like all the way in the back for some reason. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to have people sit anywhere, maybe not like next to the bathrooms yeah. and uh, they put us all the way in the back. The booth smelled like diapers. Oh no. It smelled like straight like baby changing yeah. table. Oh God. It was like so I couldn't even eat my food. I'm so sorry. And everyone was grumpy. And then at the table next to us, that seemed to be like where the staff would go to like count their money and Mm -hmm. kind of gossip. And there was so much beef happening at this restaurant Mm -hmm. that I was just like listening to all the tea. Wait, give me some of this gossip. It was a little while ago, so I'm not going to remember all the details. Um, But there was one woman Mm -hmm. who had like slept with somebody's baby daddy. (gasps) And so there was lots of drama happening. I think Mm. all three of them maybe worked at the Applebee's. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So it was like, it was definitely a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, And we just were not being well taken care of that night either. So that was my last Applebee's experience. Probably won't go back. That's very fair. (laughs) Do you remember what you ordered? No, it was something, maybe like the mac and cheese. It was the four cheese mac and cheese with honey pepper chicken tenders. That sounds right. It's so good. I famously do not like restaurant macaroni and cheese. It's tough. It's very tough. I'm more of a craft girly myself. 
Ooh. Which more, is more importantly, which cartoon? Okay, well, obviously SpongeBob. They're just better. Yeah, they're just better. They hold the cheese. Yeah. In ways that I just yeah. don't even understand. Yeah. Would you ever dress up your Kraft mac and cheese when you were younger? I can't say that I did. <laughs> oh, interesting. I would love for you to expand on that. Um, basically, I would make Kraft mac and cheese, SpongeBob, obviously, um, and then slice up a hot dog. Okay. Okay. So it would be like a real Italian dish. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like it was like fact, olive garden level. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as close as you could possibly get. Exactly. So true. Mm -hmm. Maybe now that I think about it, I'm sure someone has put hot dog in my macaroni yeah. and cheese. It's just like a great way to get protein. So true. Also, I kind of want to go to Applebee's now. <laughs> it sparked something in you. Yeah. I'm, here's the deal. I think you just picked the wrong thing. Okay. Like the the chicken wonton tacos, fucking delicious. Okay. If you want a burger, I don't know if they still have it, but they, for the longest time, had an all-day brunch burger. Oh, my God. Where it had hash browns, bacon, and a soft-boiled egg on top. And then you can get it with sweet potato fries. Wow. I do love a sweet potato fry. Mm. Me, too. I've gotten really into sweet potatoes recently. We're like, that's now part of my weekly nice. grocery list. Yeah. It's delightful. I don't really cook yeah. with them at home very often, mm -hmm. but I should start. They're really good. And I, I have a friend who works for um, f the USDA and like food government for school lunches. Okay. And apparently sweet potatoes have so many, they're packed with so many nutrients and like vitamins and minerals that they're not considered a starch. They're considered an orange vegetable. Oh. Yeah, so it's not just like regular potatoes. It's okay. Yeah. A healthy yeah. alternative. Yeah. So then technically when you're eating mm -hmm. sweet potato fries. You're just eating a vegetable. You're just having some veggies. Yeah. It's like with veggie straws. Delicious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, last but certainly not least. Yes. Ugly. Okay. Ugly. I'm going to preface it with I love what I'm about to talk about. Okay. But it's ugly that it is like a such a cultural stamp right now in the ether okay have you watched traders yet no sam you haven't watched traders i have not okay imagine do you know much about it i really don't okay so alan cumming yes. hosts basically a game of mafia do you know the game mafia so only because aubrey was recently talking about this oh, probably okay. inspired by traders yes yes so it's just mafia um, set in a I do mansion love Alan in Scotland. Cumming. He's amazing. Yeah, I'm seeing Cabaret in the spring when I go to New York. Oh, and fun! Obviously, Alan's not in it. Yeah, but like, seeing Cabaret is going to be a blast. absolutely. Um, Eddie Redmayne's going to play um, the MC, which okay. will be super fun. That is so yeah. fun. Uh, but no, so Traders is ugly right now because it's like so camp. They're all in this mansion in Scotland, mm -hmm. and it's a bunch of, like, shitty reality stars from, like, 20 years ago. That like, makes it even better. It's literally, like, Y2K real-world contestants and, like, Love. really old Survivor contestants. Um, and it's, like, a powerhouse group. Like, they got winners from all of these shows. They mm -hmm. got really great Big Brother contestants, and they're just playing Mafia in a mansion. That's so funny. Yeah. And there are two or three of them are traitors and they're just like murdering people every night. That's incredible. Yeah. And one of the traitors is um, Phaedra, who's a, a real housewife. Okay. And nobody has any idea that she's a traitor and she's just like killing people left and right. That's so fun. Yeah. So it's ugly because I hate that this is like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Totally. And we won't shame you for that. Thank you so much. I love your ties to reality TV because mm -hmm. you have watched some of the best shows. Really, really deep in there. I was yeah. raised on reality television. And I love that. Yeah. I think that that actually explains so much about you. Tell me uh, what traits about me um, <laughs> does that align with? And I won't be offended. No, totally. I mean, I think um, just generally speaking, you're a very mm -hmm. confident person. And okay. I feel like that is because you have absorbed so much oh my God. from these amazing iconic characters on reality TV. Stop. You have to be a confident person to go on a reality TV show, mm -hmm. especially the kind that we're back. Like nowadays, reality TV is so watered down. It's mm -hmm. not nearly as entertaining. Yeah. It used to be so raw mm -hmm. like and genuinely so chaotic mm -hmm. that the kind of things that you were doing on TV, like you just wouldn't do that now. Literally, nobody had any idea what was happening. It was yeah. so authentic, so unproduced and like irreverent right yeah yes um if you had to audition for a reality show which one would it be okay i wouldn't make it very far and i know that about myself if you auditioned and you guaranteed that you would get on the show bad girls club 
Oh my God. I grew Out of up on Bad field. Girls Club and I found that to be endless entertainment. Interesting. Okay. I would not have pegged Bad, Gr- Bad Girls Club for Huge you. Huge Bad Girls Club girly. And I just found that to be like so unbelievably funny. Mm-hmm. And those girls, that's another one where like, yeah. obviously towards the end, they probably knew that you could get famous off of this show. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the beginning, they were actually swinging at each other, like yeah. getting in the craziest cat fights of all time. Mm. And then they would just like go out. Oh my God. Like it was just them like literally fist fighting and then partying. Okay. That's delightful. So and also, hilarious. I, could, I love the idea of imagining you on that show being like very emotionally well adjusted and like, <laughs> you guys, I don't really think we need this energy right now. I mean, while they're just like slapping each other. No, literally. Oh my God. I don't think that I could like physically get in a fight, but I think I'd be mm-hmm. a scrappy contender. Like yeah. I could, you know. Yeah. Like imagine if you were there with the guy who hit you with his car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That would have been the, such a good bad girl the fight. The that we would start. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it was just so dramatic. Like, people would start fights on the smallest things. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people who would not do their dishes in the bad girls clubhouse. Like, it was literally just, like, oh. shit like that. And then mm-hmm. they would get into, like, a massive fight and just, like, start beef that I'm sure they still live with today. Oh, my gosh. So incredible. Okay. I love this. It was so good. They need to get some of the bad girls on Traders. Literally. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually surprised that they're not because I feel like those right. would be the exact kind mm-hmm. of people you would want on that show. I think there are a couple. So, they already got renewed for season three. Okay. I think some untapped markets are, like, bad girls club. Um, I think they need to get more drag race contestants. They had one yes. on this season, but okay. they need to do more. Totally. Like, gay people will be so messy on there. Love. Um, and then they need to get flavor of love girls. Yes. Flavor of love for me is the pinnacle of reality television. That is my favorite thing about you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I literally think that that is so fucking funny. And you talk so passionately it's about genuinely, that show. It's, season one is genuinely one of my favorite seasons of television of all time. And that's iconic. I think it's near perfection. It was one of those shows. I I think the only season I watched all the way through was New York season. Was she season one? Uh, she was season one. And then gag of the season, she got brought back partway through season okay, two. Okay, totally. Yeah. I actually do kind of remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, yeah, that was just such a time when reality TV was yeah. so insane. I mean, all these women were getting paid like $50 a day just to go hang out and their idea was like, cool, I'll get 50 bucks and like free meals for a couple of weeks. Right. And meanwhile, and live in this them, house. It's changed their lives. Yeah. Some of like <laughs> one of the girls went on to date Shaquille O'Neal. New York like has a career because of it. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. She got on the show. Fun fact. She moved to L.A. to become an actress. OK. Two weeks after she moved, she was in just some like consignment shop. Guy comes up to her and was like, hey, I'm casting for this new like dating show. I think you'd be perfect <laughs> for it. Do you want to audition? And she's like, sure. Incredible. She got Flavor of Love. Like the way that the stars align for her. Yeah. And now she's had like 10 TV shows and she's been writing this for going on almost 20 years. That the is season so premiered in 2005. crazy. Yeah. And that's like when, yeah, you really couldn't count on it being a career move. Yeah. It was no. just something to do just for a, a couple of thing, weeks. Literally. Well, and what I didn't know... Mm that you opened my eyes to mm-hmm. was how long they were actually in the house. Not that long. Literally two weeks. That's max. so crazy. Yeah. To like fall in love with this man. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. I also love his aesthetic, like the clock, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. hats. It's irreverent maximalism. Yes. I think it's actually, it would be very in right now. Like so golds true. and purples and greens and velvets. I wonder if he still wears the clock. Um, I think he does. My friend actually met him at some sort of convention in Las Vegas last year. And he still wears the clocks. And he's like a very like nice, well-adjusted man, according to her. And I love that for him. Yeah. He's he's, his mother. Totally. Which is not the assumption. Right. But that makes him all the more appealing. Yeah. Yeah. He's delightful. You know, he's taking care of those girls. Literally. (laughs) Well, okay. So as far as traders goes, Mm -hmm. how how long is the season and how long are Mm -hmm. they in the house? Um, So... The season will be like 10 or 11 episodes. They're on like episode six. So they're a little okay. over halfway done. Um, and pretty much there's a murder every night. Um, and then, so beginning of an episode, they'll wake up, they'll go to breakfast. Somebody won't show up. They've been murdered. Classic. And then throughout the episode, they'll have a little challenge to earn money. And then by the end of the episode, they have to banish somebody who they think is a traitor. Okay. So the ep- the season will be like 11 episodes long. Two people go each episode around there. Sometimes give or take one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I think since it's every night, it's also probably like a two or three week thing. Okay. It's super fast. That is fast. Because yeah. how many do they start with? I think there were 20 or 21 people this okay. first time. Um, and what's weird, they don't talk about it, but like 
everyone is dressed almost in like Sherlock Holmesy type garb <laughs> where so it's like funny. very <laughs> European, yeah. very like we're in a coffee shop. Totally. Uh, but nobody talks about it. Uh, That's even better. Yeah, lots of like berets and turtlenecks. And they're like, but this is not a costume. Right. It's like, this is a murder mystery game, so we're going to dress up like we're in Clue. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. So who are you rooting for? Um, I, unfortunately, my people keep getting murdered and banished. Oh, no. Um, thankfully, I still have a couple people there. So Parvati is, she's from Survivor. Mm-hmm. She's one of the traitors. Okay. And she is like. Are you a big Survivor head? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've auditioned for Survivor before. I've had Survivor themed birthday parties. Yeah. That's like my thing. Okay. Yeah. And like. I, I will say this till my dying day. Survivor like dipped for a lot of people. Not many people were watching it. And then the pandemic brought everyone back. And now it's like okay. cool again to watch Survivor. Totally. And I will fight anyone who like makes it their personality. And I'm like, I never left. Yeah, right. You're a fake fan. So true. Yeah, I have fought Aubrey about it. Some of us stuck it all the way out. Literally when it was real bad. Totally. Um, but yeah, so Parvati rooting for her. Um, she's kind of... She's kind of the only one right now that I'm like super duper excited about. Totally. Um, yeah. And Phaedra is the other traitor right now. Um, I saw something that was like the gays are rooting for Phaedra. The queers are rooting for Parvati. Oh my God. Funny. Yeah. So it's a very, very LGBTQ forward season, which is really nice. That is nice. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. It's fun to have. I haven't like had a reality TV show that mm-hmm. I've like been really into in a while. Yeah. Did you watch Golden Bachelor? I did. How was that? Because I feel like that also had a cultural cultural moment. I felt because I hadn't watched a season of The Bachelor in a while. Mm-hmm. So and I felt like obviously this one was bringing something new to the table. I was curious about mm-hmm. it. At first I was like, this is really wholesome. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, actually, this is a little bit disturbing. Oh, really? What was so disturbing? I sort of didn't love because to me for some reason old people messing having these like sort of social experiments Mm -hmm. on people our age Mm -hmm. it's like you know what you're signing up for and you probably are just trying to like have a moment in the spotlight Mm -hmm. i feel like these older women were Mm -hmm. genuinely trying to find love Mm -hmm. and it just felt like they were being so fucked with i was like i like don't know if i can continue watching this Oh, gosh. I saw it all the way through. Yeah. Um, I also didn't love the way that they were talking about the fantasy suites because, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure. They were fucking. I'm pretty sure he dig both of those girls down. Damn. I mean, good. <laughs> uh, good, on, good, on, good on them. I'm so proud of them. I know. And like the way that they were kind of beating around the bush, but then like giggling and getting all red. Like yeah. I was like, this oh. is. I... <laughs> so that's These a ladies. negative thing. I mean, I'm happy for them, but at the same time, I feel like it's just so much more. It feels real to them. Yeah. But like the producers are recognizing like they don't actually care if they end up together. Right. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. And I also was rooting for Ellen, the pickleball girl, and she went home pretty early. So I was like, (gasps) I'm pissed. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. Yeah. That's actually crazy. Yeah. One of my clients is like doing a large pickleball campaign Mm -hmm. this year. They're partnering with like USA Pickleball. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. I'm actually like, that's going to be fun to work on. Oh my gosh. If you need to research, I joined a pickleball league. That's right. Come watch. I would actually love to. I've never played. (gasps) Oh my gosh. It's super fun. I've only played a few times, but like I grew up playing tennis, so I've been transferring those skills totally but it's been very fun so far and i feel like i would like it because it's like i don't know something about it is like an mm-hmm. easier tennis yeah yeah it's a lot easier yeah and like a lot less physically demanding mm-hmm. slower pace yeah slightly yeah smaller court right yeah are there, there any sports that you were you would be like dying to play i am uh notoriously not a sporty girl <gasps> shocked I can run, okay. um, and that's what I was good at, mm-hmm. which is sort of a solo sport. Team mm-hmm. sports are way too much pressure for me. Mm-hmm. I am not a competitive person. Mm-hmm. I think it's because I'm an only child. Oh, okay. I didn't really have to compete for anything. Which is great. Like, it shows in your confidence. You're Thank like, you. nobody's on my level. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Nobody could even try. Yeah. Um, but the idea of kind of like competing mm-hmm. for sport mm-hmm actually terrifies me okay i think that that's a crazy thing that people do wow so you're not you're not joining any intramural teams anytime soon no okay no yeah i i miss running i need to get back into it it's been Mm -hmm. a little while Um, we have a running opportunity coming up we do i actually would like love to do that yeah um because it is there is something about signing up for a race that makes you actually Mm -hmm. do Mm -hmm. the damn thing but 
Yeah, I'm not a sporty girl. I love to watch. Um, yeah. I'll watch a sport. Yeah. I will root for the kickball team. I'll root uh, for the volleyball team, but it will be from you. the sidelines. Appreciate that. Honestly, yes. we, we love having fans. It is so important yeah. to have a cheer squad. Yeah. I think this year the team is really just like ready to kick ass and take names. And I can't wait to see yeah. that. I can't wait to bear witness. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on this hey, pod. thank you for having me. This has been such a delight. This has been so fun. You are incredibly good at this. Oh my gosh. So I would stop. love to have you I'm back. Blushing. I would love to be back. Fantastic. Talk about these restaurants once they pay you to talk about them. So true. Okay. Sometime I'll have to take you on my little tour of yes, Logan Square. I would love that. That would be a sweet time i'll be there well something i'd love to ask my guests yeah. as we wrap up yeah. is your hater mode activated today um my hater mode thankfully is like not activated today which is okay. surprising yeah that's good would you I, describe yourself as a hater or not and so generally much? i do think i'm a little bit of a hater same um i i am trying to be less of a curmudgeon totally. but it's i think we both just have high standards for people in our daily <laughs> lives people and things yeah um, and we have lots of opinions. Yes. And we're both creatives. Like we, we have mm -hmm. opinions on things and we have. And our uh, opinions yeah. are correct. Literally, if you fight us, you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am a hater. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So did I just change your mind? Your hater mode is activated. Oh God. <laughs> I think I just turned into a hater today. I can't wait to go to the Super Bowl party right after this and go hate everyone. And who are you rooting for? Um, I'm rooting for Usher. I'm very excited for the yes! halftime show. I'm very excited to see which Y2K folks pop out and surprise us. So true. Fingers crossed, Nelly Furtado. Oh my God, that would be iconic. She, oh my God. I haven't, yeah, we need more Nelly Furtado on the scene. Literally, where's Nelly Furtado been? Where is that girl? Yeah. yeah. Honestly, that would be amazing. I also wouldn't be surprised if Taylor Swift came out just mm -hmm. with all of the having a boyfriend in the Super Bowl. Right. And if she can make it from the Japan tour, which is currently happening. Okay. Because I think she had a show oh, last, last night, night in Japan. So everyone's like, is she going to okay. she gonna fly in? Well, her private jet is getting some uh, getting so serious publicity. <laughs> yeah. She's trying to get that guy shut down, the Twitter guy. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for him. Yeah. He's just doing... He's doing what we all want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But yes. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. I think it would be unlike her not to show up. Yes, I agree. And it is so like her to have a boyfriend in the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. The dream. Yeah. Maybe we'll all get there someday. It's going to have... I heard James is yeah. <laughs> working real hard on it. He's in the running. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. And thank you, Jason, for joining me. And we will talk to you guys again next week. Bye.